So let's talk weight loss challenges. Are they good or bad for you? I'm almost certain that you've seen some advertisements talking about promoting a weight loss challenge to help people lose weight really rapidly. Here in my town, there's one particular, I get the advertisements all the time on Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok, where they're put, promoting a 20 pound weight loss in six weeks. What I know about it is a person makes a $300, $400 deposit. If the person was to meet the weight loss goal, they get that deposit back. If they do not meet that weight loss goal, then the gym gets to keep the $400 deposit. This could add an incentive for a person to want to lose weight, that to actually get to lose weight, but there's some stuff about it that has health experts like myself a little queasy about promotions like that. Sure, it can get a person to lose weight, but is it really the safest way and should you be doing it? So first off, you have to understand in one of my previous posts, understanding why it is that you want to lose weight. If you're trying to lose 20 pounds in six weeks, why is it that you want to lose 20 pounds in six weeks? What's so important for you to lose those 20 pounds in such a short amount of time? And also, is your body going to reject that weight loss? Is it, are you going to regain all that weight in the long run? Should you be more patient in your weight loss? What are the, what are the detriments or the benefits of losing weight loss rapidly or, or losing the weight in a more gradual sense. So there's a study that was published on the British Journal of Nutrition. It's titled, The F Effects of Gradual Weight Loss Versus Rapid Weight Loss on Body Composition and RMR. RMR is short for Resting Metabolic Rate, a Systematic Review and Meta-Analysis. So in case you don't know about studies, uh, Systematic Review and Meta-Analysis, they basically take a whole bunch of studies where they look at them. They have their criteria that they're trying to look at. Here, the criteria that they're looking at is comparing gradual weight loss versus rapid weight loss and how it's going to affect a person's body composi composition. That's uh, like their body fat percentage and the resting metabolic rate, so how it affects a person's metabolism. As you age, your metabolism does tend to slow down, so they wanted to make sure that, that there weren't any other effects that could decrease a person's metabolism from rapid weight loss or gradual weight loss, or if there is any type of effect that the length in terms of the uh, the rate of grad of weight loss that a person undergoes when they're trying to lose weight. So one of the things that we know about weight loss challenges is that they are fast growing. Like I said earlier, they you see them all the time. You've probably seen a couple of advertisements, even uh, advertisement right now before you start, started watching this video or maybe the day before. And um, there's a big reason for this. The demand is there and it's easy to advertise. Most people, especially Americans, we like everything here now, right now. We don't want to sit and wait for stuff to actually happen. That's one of the reasons why you have not so many people wanting to run a full marathon. But if it's just like a one mile fun run, you'll get a lot more people wanting to do that one mile fun run than the full marathon because you'll have to dedicate a lot more time having to run that full marathon instead of the one mile fun run where you could you probably don't even have to to train for that you could just do it on your own and be able to finish without any problem and with gradual weight loss versus rapid weight loss it's common for a person to fall off the wagon we see it all the time every new year so every new year you have people seeing wanting to set a new year's resolution i'm gonna lose 10 pounds this year this this is it this is it i'm gonna it's gonna happen and they start these weight loss challenges to help push them to be more committed to fall through with that weight loss unfortunately when a person doesn't lose weight quite as rapidly as they had desired. This may cause them to start losing some steam and their motivation on their weight loss journey. And as the motivation starts to decrease, so does their effort in continuing to training. Here come the the excuses, the I'm too tired, I had a long day at work, I think I pulled a muscle, those types of excuses. 
that over time could lead a person to give up on the weight loss journey with a rapid weight loss uh, weight loss challenge where it's just losing a whole bunch of weight in such a short amount of time that can for some people get them to commit to their journey for the long run for other people they get to their goal even if they succeed they will decide hey i met my challenge i did it i look great i don't need this anymore i'll just be able to continue working out on my own because i don't want to continue paying this gym 400 dollars or whatever they're charging i'll just join uh planet fitness where i'm just going to be paying ten dollars a month and just work out on my own and it's not a problem i already know what to do the only thing is that as evidence in this study is that that's probably not going to happen so with rapid weight loss again the good thing is that you get to see result results quickly and you get to feel good good about yourself you get to post all these pictures of yourself with your brand new body feeling the love from all your friends and family co-workers saying man you look great they're coming up to you at work hey you lost a lot of weight you look great your clothes are fitting a lot looser than they used to you're more energetic you accomplished something good on you but here's a bad about losing weight loss rapidly as shown in this study as you can see when a person loses weight rapidly their resting metabolic rate tends to slow down so what does that mean so let's say you consume your rmr is at 2000 calories before you started training you started your weight loss journey by starting weight loss journey it started because you're on a fast track diet that has you cut down the calories a lot of these weight loss challenges uh, lead people to reduce their caloric intake by a good amount. It, let's say it's f by 500 calories. So now you're consuming 1500 calories instead of the regular 2000 calories and you're adding in the exercise to it. So you're, you're burning an extra 500 calories. Roughly over the course of the week, you're averaging about two, three, four pound uh, weight loss each week. And that's what over time will help you get to losing those 20 pounds over the six week period. The only thing is that the body adjusts. It identifies that you're consuming fewer calories than before. So it's going to want to extend the life of each calorie to be able to, to operate at its optimal level on the more limited amount of food so it's going to slow down the metabolism so think of it this way say you're you're doing a whole lot of work but you're not consuming a whole lot of calories so the body's going to try to extend the life of each calorie and that's what leads it to reduce its rmr the resting metabolic rate so it's burning calories a lot more slowly than it did at the beginning so one of the things when People that are totally new to working out, they're more likely to burn fat faster than a person who's got a more training experience and they're able to build muscle a lot faster than people that have more training experience. So that's one of the reasons why like the bodybuilders, the the Mr. Olympia type bodybuilders on a really good year, they might gain just like one or two pounds of muscle each year. So, because they're all so peaked so close that's why they're not like somebody who just started working out who might be able to gain like 20 30 pounds of muscle in a year now going back to to this study with the slower metabolic rate let's say you're at now instead of your body burning 2000 calories it's now burning 1500 calories at the end of the weight loss uh, challenge, if you're continuing to consume just the 1500 calories, you'll be fine. You would I uh, theoretically maintain that weight loss. But if you reduce the exercise activity, the resting metabolic rate is going to remain the same, but you're not going to be losing quite as many calories so what that means is that that caloric deficit which got you to lose the weight initially is not going to be there 
and you're actually going to be in a caloric surplus. And then if you stop eating the really strict diet the, that had you lose weight during the weight loss challenge and you're starting to eat more, more calories, you're going out drinking with your friends more often, you're going out eating more often, or you're just generally eating more than you did during the weight loss challenge, that's going to extend expand that caloric surplus and therefore lead you to be gaining more weight. So again, imagine you start at 2,000 calories, the resting metabolic rate is at 2,000 calories, and now it's at 1,500 calories. Theoretically, you could be at 2,500 calories and each every two weeks, you might be gaining two pounds each week. So after a couple months, not only would you regain those 20 pounds that you lost during the weight loss challenge, uh, theoretically, you might actually have gained more weight over the course of the uh, of the term after the weight loss challenge. Another thing that this study identified was that rapid weight loss is not just fat that's being lost. So some of it actually includes muscle, and this makes total sense since you're in a such a caloric deficit. And you're increasing your exercise activity, your body needs more energy. And once it gets to its end, where you, it's already burned up all the calories from the carbohydrates that you're storing, uh, the, then um, it will start fishing for other places to, to get more calories. Some of it could come from fat, some of it could come from muscle, and start breaking that down. And that's what that would contribute to such a jar, giant amount of weight loss. Yes, you hit the 20 pound weight loss goal, but you may have lost some of the muscle that you would rather have wanted to keep. And when you're, and since you've lost some muscle, that'll actually also contribute to the slowing down of the metabolism. So you're not going to be able to burn calories as as effectively as you would have otherwise had you been more gradual in your weight loss. With a gradual weight loss goal, still reducing the caloric intake to get into a caloric deficit. I usually recommend people just go for like 200 calories below your resting metabolic rate with the activity uh, factor. So based on your activity level, that's going to affect your basal metabolic rate, uh, your resting metabolic rate. I mean, you don't want to be just at your resting metabolic rate cause, because that's basically how many calories your body burns if you're just like sedentary at a desk or just watching TV on the sofa. You want to include the activity factor, which say you walk your dog every night or you go to the gym three, four times a week, is, that's going to raise the amount of calories that your body burns. If you're going to add on some more activity to that and decrease the, the amount of calories just below that, base of, that resting metabolic rate with activity factor, theoretically you'll be able to increase the caloric deficit and therefore add on to, to the amount of weight that you're able to lose. With a gradual weight loss, say you reduce your calorie intake by 300 calories and you increase your act, uh, your activity level, your exercise to burn an extra three to 500 calorie, three to 500, 600, 700 calories during each workout. Adding those together could increase the amount of caloric deficit and lead towards weight loss from fat by with your diet, by increasing the amount of protein that you're consuming, this will help allow you to maintain the lean muscle that your body is carrying. So like the person that went on the weight loss challenge that lost their weight really rapidly and some of that weight came from muscle, a gradual weight loss program uh, person will be consuming more protein that will help save, maintain some of that muscle that they're carrying. Since they're in a caloric deficit, it makes it very unlikely that they'll be able to increase a lot of muscle mass if they're totally new to working out. There is, a, there is some evidence that that could lead to increased muscle, but right now, if 
weight loss is the goal. That's not really the biggest, most important thing. The first thing you want to focus on is the fat. And if you want to build, trying to build more muscle, then you could focus on increasing the amount of calories you're eating to feed the muscle to grow a lot bigger. So I hope that I kept it simple enough for you to understand. I know that some of this stuff can get a little technical, especially when I'm throwing around terms like basal metabolic rate, uh, resting metabolic rate, and things like that. If you have any other questions, please feel free to reach out to me. Uh, like I said, I know that some of this stuff can, on paper, looks a little looks really simple, and you think that you got down pat, but when you look at the science, it can get really technical and really complicated for most people. Again, if you have any other questions about this, please feel free to reach out to me. Just hop on my website and you can get a hold of me.